So, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, today I want to talk about the age of the Ummah. And probably what I would consider the most important, significant, not important, the most significant hadith of this century. And so we're going to talk about the age, what is the age of this Ummah, right? Uh, Bani Israel, the former Muslim Ummah, that started with two prophets and ended with two prophets. The former Muslim Ummah started with Musa and Harun, right? And then they had a continuous series of prophets, right? Uh, ending with two prophets. Like the Hadith in Sayyid Bukhari mentions, Kullama khalafa nabiyun khalafa nabi. Uh, every time a prophet passed, they were, they were uh, succeeded by another prophet who took over the affairs of Bani Israel. So this is, so starting with two prophets, Musa and Harun ending with two prophets, Isa and Yahya, right? And this is why this this time period of uh, from Musa to Isa is about two thousand years. Okay, so now this time period in this two thousand two thousand this uh, you know this two thousand years that Bani Israel had. Now we have it. So this the Ummah of Bani Israel ends with Isa والسلام, in the same way. The Ummah of Prophet Muhammad starts with Prophet Muhammad and at some point it is going to end. It is going to end with the death of the believers that when the wind goes and all the good believers will pass away and no one will be left except for the bad people. So what is the timeline of the Ummah? What is the age of the Ummah? And over here I will be mentioning a few interesting things. First we will go to the Bab al-Salah of Imam Bukhari. Okay. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned that the age of Bani Israel was like between the times of Dhuhr to Asr. Okay, so how much is the time between Dhuhr and Asr? And then the age of my Ummah will be like the time from Asr to Maghrib. Maghrib is the next day, right? Then Maghrib is the next day. So from Asr to Maghrib and Maghrib is the next day. Over here also I want to mention another important point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of the longer timeline, Allah created the heavens and the earth in how many days? Six days. Allah created the heavens and the earth in, the six, in six days. The sixth day is the creation of Adam. The seventh day, which is which day? Generally known in our world, Friday is the seventh day. And when will the day of judgment be? According to the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu Friday will be, the Day of Judgment will be on Friday. Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be on Friday. So seventh day, Yawm din Maliki Yawm din the seventh day is the Day of Judgment. Okay? So you also, I'm also giving you that larger timeline, which is Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days. Sixth day is Adam and his history. Okay? And in that history, Dhuhr to Asr is Bani Israel. And from Asr to Maghrib is the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? Now, this is the hadith in Sayyid Bukhari in Bab al-Salah. Now, there's another hadith that's very interesting. And that is, you know, one day with Allah, now there are many different layers of days. For example, I mentioned one type of day, which is the six days and then the seventh day, day, day of judgment. But then there's another day mentioned in Quran that is, uh, that is a thousand years. And then there's another day mentioned in Quran, Khamsina al fasana 50,000 years. And then, Mimma Ta'uddun is also one of them. So, Mimma Ta'uddun of you count. So, a thousand days, this is why there's a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophet said, Allah give my ummah half a day more, meaning a thousand plus half a day. Bani Israel had how many days? Two days, 2,000. Okay? A full thousand plus the dua of the Prophet, 500 days. So this hadith shows us again in about 1,500 years, give and take. And the previous hadith from Dhuhr to Asr, Asr to Maghrib. Now, you know, Asr to Maghrib is generally a little bit shorter, generally, than from Dhuhr to Asr. Now, having said that, so we get a basic timeline, right? Imam Sayyuti considered the lifespan of the Ummah to be a thousand years, but then he changed his mind uh, to 1,500 years. 
And there's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that's also very interesting in this, in this issue. And that is the Prophet said about the individual. Before I talk about the Ummah, when I talk about the individual, the Prophet said, whoever reads more Qur'an, Allah will give him a longer life. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is good to his parents, Allah will give him a longer life. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is good to his relatives, Allah will give that person a longer life. Aw kama qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the same way, there's a hadith of the Prophet Imam Sayyuti records that if the Ummah does good, the time of the Ummah will be extended. And if the Ummah doesn't do good, then the time of the Ummah will be shortened. So the same way, if you're good, your, your life will have more barakah, more things in it. And if, you're, if you don't do good, then your life will be shortened. Now, so <clears throat> this hadith that I just mentioned, where the, the, the Prophet did the dua that's in Sayyid Bukhari to give us a half a day more, meaning 500 years more, right? So that's according to Bani, Bani Yisrael was given about 2,000 years. We're given about 1,500 years, give and take. Now, what's interesting is this, is that we know that these two ummas are a pair, right? The Prophet said, as I mentioned in a previous hadith and many other narrations that talk about this, All those things will come to you that came to Bani Israel, like two shoes of a pair. So the shoes, you know, their size, you know, their history, their size in this case, is pretty similar, right? There may be some differences uh, using the tools of the olden days, but by and large, the shoes are almost the same. But the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ indicate that the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ, its lifespan will be a little bit shorter than Bani Israel. Okay? Having said that, let me mention another hadith. This is the hadith I think is in some ways the most significant hadith of the century. And that is, the Prophet said, he counts five phases of human history from the perspective of the Ummah of Muhammad Five phases of history, okay? Five phases of history. And I'm just going to go over this quickly, and I'm going to talk more about this in more detail because it's very significant hadith. I think it's the most significant hadith of the century. The Prophet said, Takunu fikum nabuwa ma sha'allahu an takun thumma yarfa'aha Prophethood will remain amongst you as long as Allah wills it to remain amongst you. ثُمَّ يَرْفَعَهَا Then Allah will raise it. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَ عَلَى مِنْ حَاجِ النَّبُوَةَ تَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تَكُونُ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعَهَا Then خِلَافَ عَلَى مِنْ حَاجِ النَّبُوَةَ Meaning خِلَافَ خِلَافَ تُرَاشِلَةَ Which is 30 years will stay amongst you as long as Allah wills it to stay amongst you. ثُمَّ يَرْفَعَهَا Then Allah will raise it. Then the Prophet said then there will be kingship that will bite. Okay? تَكُونُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تَكُونُ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعَهَا In short, this is the Umayyad, the Abbasid, the, uh, the, the Ottoman Empire, the Mughal Empire. They, were, they had tyranny in them. But there were Muslims ruling Muslims. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا عَادًا تَكُونُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تَكُونُ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا جَبْرِيًّا Then there will be imperialism, kingship on you, that will be forced. Jabba means by force. You won't want it, but it'll be put on you, right? And each of these phases has two two parts, right? The prophethood has two parts, Makkah Medina. The Khilafah has two parts, Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman and Ali, and you can also include Hassan. And then the Mulkan Adan, you had the Arabs, the Umayyad and the Abbasid, then you had the Ottoman and the Mughal, right? And then you had Mulkan Jabriyan, first was European onslaught, okay? And then now you have the imperialism coming from the U.S. to the Muslim world, which started with Iraq, okay? Now, this will also have two phases, okay? So now, in this, we are in the second phase of this. So the Prophet then said, after this Mulk al what will happen? ثُمَّ تَكُونُوا خِلَافَ عَلَىٰ مِنْ هَاجَ Then there will be Khilafah on the footsteps of the Prophet again. So again, that would also have two phases, which I'm not going to go into, but these are the five periods. Nabuwa, Khilafat al-Rashidah, Khilafat ala min haj al-Nabuwa, Mulkan Adan, Kingship al Bayt, Mulkan Jabriyan, Forced Imperialism, and Khilafat ala min haj al-Nabuwa again. So the world is moving towards a single direction. Now this is a very interesting thing because the world is in a point right now where a lot of changes are occurring regarding there's so many conflicts that are brewing, so many issues of resources, so many countries under debt, right? Israel is becoming the new power in the Middle East as the Middle East fights itself. 
So many things are happening and everyone is vying for, uh, for an upper hand and, and, up, and, and to have the upper hand in the whole scheme of things. Everything is going in a conservative, right-wing way, whether it is Modi, Netanyahu, Trump, whatever. The whole world is up for a big conflict right now. A conflict of resources, a conflict of water, you name it. We are in a very precarious situation. And so, as we are in this very precarious and a very difficult situation, we will find ourselves, perhaps, facing the end of times if we're not already in the end. I mean, we already are in the end of times, but as time goes by, the Prophet said, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is time will go faster. So the events will happen faster, not slower. As time goes by, more and more things will happen each year to bring about the, 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 the inevitable that is going to happen. Now, the point that I wanted to make about this hadith is that after the five phases of the history were mentioned, the Sahabi, the narrator, says, ثُمَّ سَقَطَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Then the Prophet was quiet, meaning he said he understood, right? I meaning that the Day of Judgment would be close after the Khilafah, after Isa comes back and everything happens. That is, so we're very, we are, if, if you look at it, look at this hadith, right? It first of all gives a very accurate account of our history till now. So for any Muslim that has any doubt, right? Because you can't clean your heart till your doubt is removed. Doubt, raib, raib is a bigger disease of the heart, which is the disease of the modern times. Our scholars have been great to deal with the doubt of shahwat, lust, hawa, jealousy, all those things. But our scholars of the past really haven't de dealt with the issue of doubt very much, other than Imam Ghazali. And the issue of doubt is the modern sickness, that we doubt and we don't accept reality. We doubt and we don't accept reality. We always want to be in our com comfort zone, in our entertainment zone, because we are taught to be distracted with everything that is around us. And so think about this saying of the Prophet by Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu anh, he said, the Prophet mentioned these five phases of history, and we are at the verge of the end of these phases. So the life of the Ummah is going to be about give and take 1,500 years, give and take, right? And then some extension based upon the good deeds or the bad deeds of the Ummah. So this is the age of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I will be talking more about this issue and other issues that relate to this. And then also I clarified the six days, sixth day being the creation of Adam, okay? And the seventh day being Yawm al -Jum ah or Yawm al -Qiyama, right? Jum'ah -Ah means the day of gathering, and Qiyamah is also the day of gathering. Anyway, Inshallah, uh, pray for me, and <clears throat> subscribe, uh, like, leave comments, let's talk, let's grow. Uh, and uh, let's learn, inshallah, and be prepared, most important. Talking is cheap. We gotta be prepared for what is coming. We gotta be able to save our families and our friends and be able to let the ulama also, that are kind of like not looking at this aspect of our history, where we're standing in history, the most important thing right now for Muslim is to know where we are standing in history, to know what to do. If you don't know where we're standing in history, if you don't know your past, if you don't know where we're going, then you don't know the will of Allah. You don't know where to go, right? So this hadith that I mentioned is probably the most significant hadith of the century to let Muslims know where we're standing and where we need to go. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.